Hey guys, welcome to Record Box Masterclass number six. Uh, today we're going to be going over marker points, cues, hot cues, loops, everything you need to save data in your song and save song information. So to get started, we're going to be using the song Archangel by Quibs. He is a artist out of Minneapolis. He mainly makes dubstep. Love the dude. Uh, and songs free download. So why not familiarize yourself with something that's going to stay free um, just as he gets better at producing as well. So I always like to put my local people on and everyone that's kind of helped me out throughout the years and something where I'll expose their music to you guys. So we're going to start off with Dragon, the song Archangel, into the record box. So we corrected it before because it was at 149 point nine nine so we moved it up to 150 so if you haven't already done that all you need to do is go here type 150 so now that we're aligned with that quick catch up from last last session uh the master class five what we're going to do is we're going to find the start of the grid so we're going to use the fine tune uh b grid shift to kind of get it lined up with the start of the song which is going to be right here and then all same repeat information, you're going to hit C. So C gets you start on the start of the song. So when I'm starting a song, what I like to do is I always like to put a marker point at the beginning. So what marker points are going to be helpful for you are there's two different things. There's something called hot cues and there's something called marker points. Hot cues, what they allow you to do is they allow you to jump to a certain hot cue when you're playing on the fly whereas marker points are more of a, a search feature or as you as an artist to know kind of how your song structures are laid out or how certain things are done. I, I, I have a system for markers that I'm going to show you because it works really well for me. And that way I know where everything is in the song. Even if I've heard the song once or twice, I'll be able to play it live on a fly if asked. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit C. So what C does is it will align your essentially the grid marker on the grid. So we want to be on the grid and then you're going to hit C and then you're going to hit the uh, keyboard key M. So what that's going to do is that's going to pop up a little red triangle at the top. So this is going to be your first marker point. And then marker points are all stored on the right hand side of the screen. It's called a memory queue. So the call. So they're going to be stored right here in the memory. So there's high cues. And then I don't really use the info ever. Uh, this just kind of tells you things about your track, but that can all be found in here. But there's the memory and the high cue. These are going to be your two important things in this menu right here. So this is where they are. You can have a max of, I believe, 10 marker points and eight cue points in a song or hot cues in a song. Um, some of the older devices don't support that many, but marker points are a pretty safe way to say, even if the player you're playing on doesn't support eight hot cues that you'll be able to see your marker points. So starting with the first marker point, we have it and how we kind of change our eight bars. This is how we're going to be able to find the drop. So the first thing I do is I do the first marker point, make sure the grid's on hard parts done. Then what you're going to do is you're going to find the drop. So what you can do is you can scroll over on your arrows and see how it stays lined up with the the grid that's because we have the quantize on and also because we have the eight bars on from the point we were at so a really good way to preview it is you just hit c again that will continually hold to the grid and then you can preview it finding the drop so what we're going to do here is we're going to be finding the drop of the song so that's a build up so what we're going to do is we're going to go over eight bars more see if this is a drop which it's not but so this is going to be the eight bars to drop buildup. And then one more over, we're going to be right on for the drop. And I'll show you guys that right here. And then just to jump back to that point right there. So just in case you don't believe that that was the drop, we're going to go back a little bit in the song and find the buildup. So right there, you can tell this, this is in fact the drop. So there's going to be certain 
marker points that are always going to kind of have the drops on them, if you may say on a 150 song. So it's going to be, so notice at the top here how you have the 1.1 bars, and I'll highlight that with the mouse right there. Press over, it's going to be 9.1, it's going to be 17.1, 25.1, and 33.1. These are going to be around where your drops are or where your marker points are going to go almost on every song, unless there's a song that has like a two bar buildup, which I'll, I'll show you later, uh, but it's not really important right now. It, what's, what's important is that you can mark your drop. So just the same as before, how we marked our beginning, you hit C on the keyboard. So this will get it loaded to the, the grid. You hit M for the marker point. And what this is gonna do is gonna mark the drop. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce hot cues to you. So I always use hot cues to signify either drops or loops. So I use those two and I use markers for everything else. And you can color code mar uh, markers as well by right clicking on the memory cue. And for example, we'll make it pink. So sometimes uh, certain DJ equipment will not take the colors, but that's okay. So just don't get used to relying on them. But for the newer, all standard club equipment, they all bring up the colored cues. So for example, if you know your system is everything pink is the drop, that's your system. I don't personally use colors all the time, but it's different for everyone. I know some people who religiously do it. So now that we have CM, if you try hitting CM again, it won't create another marker point. So you can't mess up with that. And then what I want you to do is I want you to hit two on your keyboard. So hitting two, you see there's a B that appeared right here and a B that appears right here. So with your keyboard commands, one, two, and three are linked to the A, B, and C hotkey doesn't matter what you use for your drop. I always use B because A I'll use for special circumstances and C is usually the second drop of the song just because there's some players that only support up to three hotkeys. So that's why I use B because I know B is going to be on every system that has hotkeys and that way I'll know my first drop every single time. So we have our marker point, we have our hot cue, and what I usually do in the song now is I'll go back one, so I'll hit back on the arrow, which is eight bars, and I'll do C and then M again, which sets another marker point, and I'll go back once more, which is gonna be the start of the buildup to the drop, or it's gonna be the 16 bars before drop, and then I'll do C and then M, and how do I know that? It's because the drops here, once on the keyboard is eight, twice over is 16. 16 is usually a big enough buildup to know, or if you're gonna get your songs aligned, it's enough time to give yourself room to do that. So finishing out with the song, what I do is let's hit over a couple more times. And luckily with Sean, he follows the eight bar uh, pattern pretty well when he's making his music. So it's awesome to teach, awesome to play, works with a ton of stuff. And that's why artists do certain things the way they do it. And then some artists are the complete opposite and they're like, okay, I'm going to put a two bar here, of just like random filler before the drop. And that that's when it gets to more complicated grids. So usually on the out of the drop, you can see for right here, it goes quiet for about 16 bars, which is essentially the same buildup as this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit C and then M again to make another marker point. What this is gonna do is it's gonna signal when the track is going out of its harder part and into the beatdown. So you can use it and gauge it for transitioning. And then I'm gonna find the second drop. So that's the buildup. So I'm just gonna hit the right arrow key on the keyboard. So just as we were on, I always like to check as well. You're gonna do another C and then an M. And then you're gonna do a three this time. What this will do is it's gonna signify that C is the second drop. And how you can load up the hot cues very quickly in your record box once you've already programmed them 
So I want you to go between hitting two and three on your keyboard and you'll see that it's playing the drops and it does. it's not like when you hit the C command, how it loads up, but it's it will actually play the portion of the song when you hit the key. So I'm gonna hit two right now. And now I'm gonna hit three. So you can see how that kind of brings in a new thing with gridding. You'll see how the hot cues kind of work before you actually even touch the DJ uh, deck yourself. So last thing we're gonna cover are the loops for this section. So with your loops, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have, so how you make a loop is you, we'll do this first part here. So let's say I want to loop this part. So I want to loop from here to here. So what you can do is you know that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight beats. Eight beats, as you know, it's four beats for one bar. So it's two bars. So it's going to be a two bar loop. So how you do that is you see here, see where it says auto beat loop. This is gonna be for beats. So we know if we just did a four beat loop, it would be this right here. And if we do an eight beat loop, it's gonna be this. So this is a, a loop that we have saved now. And let's say we like that loop and we wanna keep it and we wanna utilize that later on when we're playing. I use loops a lot. Some people do, some people don't. I like to use them. So what you can do now is if you see you're on your grid and you move to your loop, that's how you access the loop function and you have it highlighted. Doesn't matter where it is in the song, what you can do is you can hit set hot cue A or you can hit A on your keyboard. I usually click the A on here just so I have it saved, but you'll see how with the hot cues, how the actual hot cues are lime green and the loop hot cues are A. So just the same as before, we're gonna hit the B and then we're gonna hit the C. And then I want you to hit the A to see what it does. So what the B does is the B is gonna basically just let it keep playing. We'll switch it over to C. And then when you hit the A, what it does is it loads up the loop and it saves the loop. So this is gonna be useful for when playing later because it's gonna actually save the loop and then you can loop out. So it's essentially like a hot cue that you have a little bit of time if you need. So that's just kind of a fun loop feature. Uh, loops are a little bit more complicated for now, but it's cool to know that you can do it. For example, if you had a vocal sample that you really liked and wanted to layer into a new song, you could put it in a loop and save it. That would be possible. And then just the same is you can do D, E, F, G. Um, it doesn't work the same as marker points to where if the marker points already created, it's not going to make another hot um, marker point. The hot cues are going to make, so you can do as many as you want of the same hot cue, but doesn't really make a lot of sense unless you have a system down. So other than that, the bar structures run by eight bars for the majority of the songs. And if you, if you download the ones that I showed you here, they're gonna work out for you and this is gonna make a lot more sense. But for the next one, we're gonna, we'll move to a different genre of music, uh, just in case everyone here doesn't like dubstep or doesn't like certain genres of music. We'll kind of touch into everything just to make sure everyone is familiar with the kind of music that they like. Uh, so that's, that's it for class six today. Um, if there's, any lesson that you take the most away from, it's going to be this one and how to set up your songs and how to set up the gridding. Uh, but this for seven, eight, and nine and 10, we're just going to go into the finite details of preparing the rest of your tracks and getting everything all set up for export and just kind of figuring out how to sort stuff and just how to harmonically align songs that you have gridded. So I will see you guys in class seven.